Welcome to a short episode of Last Week Comics Today. There was supposed to be another book here, and hopefully I'll get that next week, but I don't have this week. Midnight Show issue four, it would be, it would have been the final issue, and I will say this again next week when I actually read it. I wish it were a longer series than four issues. Could have easily been six, but whatever. It's fine. We'll talk about that next week. This week, we're going to start with Shazam. This is not drawn by Dan Mora. I did look ahead, so issue 8 will be also drawn by this person. And then issue 9 is drawn by somebody else. It's also not Dan Mora. So I'm going to wait for the April solicits and see who's drawing issue 10. And if it's not Dan Mora, then I might drop this. Because um, while it's still good, it's still entertaining and fun and bizarre... I just don't have the same affection for it if it's not drawn by Mora. So, uh, we do get... There was a mention in the solicits a couple of months ago that we were going to get a Batmite equivalent for Shazam. Shazammite? Sounds like a mineral. Uh, which didn't actually happen in the comic. <laughs> it's mentioned as in the solicit. Which was a lie. In this issue, we get a Bizarro version of... Shazam, which is another interesting concept. It's, um, I don't know, weird to be lifting so much from Superman, but uh, whatever, it's fine. We do get more space dinosaurs, and we do get a uh, fight with Black Adam, and uh, <laughs> you can see here it's, I'm going to say, far better drawn on the cover than in the issue itself. But uh, the fight does actually take place. The cover is not a lie. And it's good. It's fine. It's fine. It's just not, like I said, as good without Danmore art. And um, if I don't get him, then I think I'm going to drop the book. So we'll see what happens. Up next is Conan, issue 6. And issue 5, there was a theft that took place that ended um, dramatically. And this issue, we get Conan, we get some flashbacks over here. Uh, there are breasts, I think, only on the last page. And what I... So the, the opening here is flashback, and then we get to the present, and... Conan sees the emergence of three ghosts, and I like this, how he's in the background already drawing his sword. He's like, ghosts? Alright. I've got a weapon for that. <laughs> it's just awesome. So, it's it's the aftermath, I guess, of the theft that was set up last issue, and um, it's really great stuff. The writing's Still great. The art, I don't think, is as good as the opening arc. And that artist is coming back in issue something. I don't know. I guess in March, I think. This is only three? I don't know. I saw his name listed as returning. And for that, I'm happy. But um, this is good. It's, um... I don't know what else to say. It's it's good. It's uh, Conan. There are some spirits. And um, they seem to be possessing possibly him and his um, co-thieves. His comrades. It's not entirely established. And I'm not showing off the final page because that's where the breasts are. But um, probably get explained next issue. Uh, the only thing that I wish is... Conan... Conan has a long history, right? Especially in comics. Um, a lot of his story has been told and probably adapted. None of which I read. But uh, we get... So I read the Dark Horse Brian Wood stuff, which had Billet in it. And we get sort of references to and we get some snippets of bullets but I really kind of prefer to actually see this so like I don't know mix in some new stuff with some old stuff original adaptations with uh, I guess adaptations with original stories I guess is maybe what I'm looking for I don't know maybe I'm wrong maybe 
I don't know. Those stories exist. I could read those, but I would like... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I want, ultimately. This is good. I'm enjoying it. I kind of want a little more, though. This one I need to be careful of. There's definitely penis in this one. But Once Upon a Time, At the End of the World, Issue 11. This is the beginning of the final arc. And while reading this, I was just sort of surprised. I was mm, surprised at the wrong word. Confused is the wrong word. Um, there are three artists over the course of this series. Each arc is drawn by a different artist. And they are fairly significantly different even storytelling wise so in the original arc these two characters meet they separate almost immediately and then meet back up again and uh, it's the story of them coming together the, the second arc is this art style which is very different from Dragota but in this we have them living together and it's pretty happy until it's not. And this ish, this arc is going to be. I mean, Dragota is clearly a very different artist. Here's the art from the opening arc. So it's nice that for the flashback sequences, the original artists return. Um, it's. I mean, the whole series is post-apocalyptic, so I'm trying to avoid that phrase, but um, it's the the planet is even worse now than it was originally. <laughs> we get these fire rats, and we get... It's it's almost Mad Max Fury Roadish. There's just, like, these zealots, and what I'm trying to say, what I'm poorly articulating, is that it must be very strange. There's probably a pretty small audience for... Um, just how far the story goes with these characters, and then the extreme variance in artist. So, um, I guess, I don't know. It's weird, and I'm glad that I'm enjoying it, but I, I, I think, I would imagine, other people are turned off by one of those elements, and uh, for that, it's to their detriment, because the story is great. Oh, look at this. Oof gross right anyway it's the final arc i really want to see where it goes i hope in some possible way that there's a happy ending even though like it the world has been terrible for the entire time but uh fingers crossed some sort of happy ending for either the world or these characters Fingers crossed. Lastly, there is Pine and Merrimack issue one. I wasn't sure about this because I'm I'm a fan of Kyle Starks, but not all of his stuff. There was whatever the monster, the slasher, cul-de-sac thing was. I wasn't a big fan of, and um, this one is great. If thankfully this is great, I immediately added this to my pull list. It's probably yeah, I can comfortably call this my pick of the week. Pine and Merrimack is a four issue series. <laughs> These are not Pine and Merrimack. There's a, a joke about that right in the beginning of this. Um, the title is the streets that they are set up on. They're at an intersection right there. But they are private investigators. There's a couple page backstory right here in the beginning for those two, and it's well done it's very quick it's i think actually just two pages is that right it's two pages we get one page about her we get one page about him and we get uh we get half a page there and we get a little bit here about them and then it just jumps into the story and it's great and uh i think the art is fantastic and we get some like genuinely funny moments where he draws her a picture of an eagle carrying a hot dog, and awesome, awesome. Uh, we also get um, this woman who's mad at them, and he throws, uh, she throws shit at their window, right there. Shit thrown at the window. And even while they're getting yelled at, they're having a private conversation on the side, and she's like, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna be the one that cleans the shit off the window, right? And it's, it's just, it's, it's good, it's well done, it's funny. 
Uh, I care about these characters and I want to see where this goes and I hope that past these four issues I've got one issue of four and already I'm hoping for more but this is great this is great love it now there's a slight update from last week's video I was complaining about a calendar that Marvel had put out and this week I was given this this is Diamond's, obviously, 2024 calendar, and this I have no issues with. So it's it's well done. It's actually useful. It looks like someone that had studied art actually worked on this. It's visually interesting up here. Uh, we have some variants in the blues here, which I did not immediately notice. I don't care about Diamond's birthday, but it does tell me when free comic book day is. And for that, uh, it's useful. It also tells me when previews is going to come out, and I didn't know that's what uh, this color coding is. So this color here is when previews goes on sale. And, like, that's also interesting. I never suspected that they had a planned schedule a year out, but whatever. Um, this is much better than Marvel's. Hands down. Easily. So <laughs> this is everything that I got this week. Next week will be a larger comic week. I've got some other stuff coming in too. But um, these are, they're, they're each good, but I will recommend Pine and Merrimack again because this is a new first issue and I will always push first issues. Um, hopefully get some additional eyes on those, get some additional sales. But uh, this is genuinely great, highly recommended. And I get all of my books from a local comic shop. So if you don't know where yours is, you can use this URL to find the one closest to you. Thanks for watching.